There goes Davis. Oh, my gosh. Davis is going to run it all the way Here back. Here comes pressure. Bortles sees it coming. Looking for Wharton in the end zone. Wharton behind the defense. Oh! Are you kidding? <laughs> It's the final day of spring practice for Ole Miss football, and fans have made their way out to Vaughn Hemingway Stadium to get one final look at the Rebels before the 2014 college football season rolls around. From Oxford, Mississippi, on the Ole Miss campus, it's the 2014 Grove Bowl, the Ole Miss spring game. Hello, everyone. Alongside former Rebel All-American Harry Harrison, I'm Richard Cross. Glad to have you along for a taste of college football late in the spring. It's a little bit different feel this year for Ole Miss. A couple of years ago, in Hugh Freeze's first year, there was inexperience everywhere. There was a huge lack of depth, and quite frankly, they didn't have enough people to play a game. It was a little better last year, but this year, Harry Harrison, the Rebels feel like there's a little more depth and they can uh, have had a productive spring. It's a lot more depth, Richard, to really talk about it. And they've had a really hard spring, a physical spring. Coach Freeze wanted to do this, and it takes a couple years to get the bodies in here, but this year has been special. One area of, of concern from a depth standpoint, maybe on the offensive line, Hugh Freeze and his staff feel like some of the incoming freshman class will help that out when fall rolls around. One area where there's no concern, at least with the starting position, is quarterback. Back. Bo Wallace comes back after an outstanding season. And really, Harry, he, he's been better protecting the football. Much better, Richard. He had a little bit of a lapse at the, towards the end of last season, but uh, I certainly turned it around. Had a great outing in the bowl game up in Nashville. And this year, he's a bigger, more, bo more mobile quarterback with a lot more experience. I look for big, big things out of Bo this fall. And then a chance when this season is done, if Bo Wallace stays healthy and plays well, for him to be at the top of a lot of the passing categories in the all-time record book for Ole Miss. So no worries about who the starting quarterback is. What about the backup? A couple of redshirt freshmen vying for the opportunity to take snaps behind Bo Wallace. For more on that story, here's Hannah Chalker, the third member of our broadcast crew. Yeah, Richard, the battle for who will back up quarterback Bo Wallace and potentially start in 2015 is just getting heated up here in Oxford between Ryan Buchanan and Devontae Kincaid, both redshirted last year, now getting their first looks at live game situations this spring. Coach Ufri said he has not favorited one QB over the other, and they both bring completely different talents to the table. Kincaid with his strong arm and good running ability. Buchanan is better in the pocket, and he's got the mind for the game, Free said. He says his mental capacity of the playbook is that of Eli Manning so a huge compliment there and don't forget Richard Jeremy Liggins 300 pound QB also should be taking some snaps in certain situations under center this fall so look for all three of those guys coming up thanks guys. a lot Hannah Hugh Freeze thinks Jeremy Liggins might ought to drop a little weight if he's going to really compete for that quarterback position took him a while to get on this Ole Miss campus but he could be a wild card in the QB race coming up we get you set for the spring scrimmage it's Ole Miss the spring game the Grove Bowl at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium in Oxford The Grove Bowl on CSS is brought to you by Cook's Pest Control. Upgrade your home's termite protection to the unbeatable combination. Cook's Pest Control and the Centricon system. Call Cook's for a free pest and termite evaluation. By Golden Flake, the South's original potato chip. And by Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama's white sand beaches. Nice spring afternoon in Oxford, Mississippi. It is Ole Miss, the spring game. Rebels at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium wrapping up spring practice. This is the 15th of the practices that teams are allowed in the spring. It's time for us to start with our Cook's Pest Control thorough inspection. Harry, uh, the idea, what do you want to take away from the spring game or maybe the spring overall? One of those things we talked about just a couple of minutes ago, the, the battle to be the backup quarterback position. They're two pretty viable candidates. No doubt about that, Richard. They're both the redshirt freshmen. They both set in last year, got a lot of reps, but sometimes from the uh, a scout team. And so you don't always get the grasp of that. But they were, in the, they were in the meeting rooms. They went through all the film, did everything like being ready for game day, but they just obviously didn't get to play. But you got two kind of contrasting quarterbacks. You've got a young man out of Dallas, Devontae Kincaid, that uh, can run and throw. And then you got Ryan Buchanan out of Jackson, Mississippi, who really is more of a pocket passer. Can uh, run that read option, but uh, that's not his forte. 16 of the top 20 tacklers from a year ago return. There's a lot of experience. Only lost two starters off the defense. Defense, 
Richard, from a depth standpoint, is as good as it's ever been. And, uh, of course, there's some stars on that defense. But I was talking to Coach Womack on Thursday, and he said, you know, Harry, for the first time, I've got six corners I could go to war with. I've got four safeties I feel good about. And then when you, you talk about down tackles, he's, he's got about six guys there. And then defensive ends, he's got four on campus already, and he's got a couple coming in in, in this summer that he's he's very excited about. And, he, and he's uh, he, he's vocal about it. He'll tell you. You know what he said, Rich? He said, I don't know if that equates to more wins, but I like where we are, and we're going to be hard to deal with come the fall. Well, and uh, some depth on that defensive side of the football as well. In the special teams game, there are going to be new faces all over the place. Andrew Ritter has graduated. Tyler Campbell has graduated. Uh, those guys are fifth-year guys that finished with master's degrees and 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 moved on. Coming up in the fall, Gary Wunderlich, a, a kicker from Memphis who was the number one kicker in the country, is is rated by the the recruiting services. He'll be on campus. We've got a couple of guys that are here this spring trying to work themselves into the battle as well. Well, no doubt about that. Uh, Andy Papanastas was a guy that was signed in the class with Kim Dietschy and Tunsil and those guys, but he he gray-shirted Richard because of those uh, red-shirt seniors, and so he's just now coming into his own. He's had a good spring. If we get a chance to see him kick today, he gets the ball off the ground very, very quick, and that's, uh, that's always good from a coaching standpoint. Don't get things blocked, but he's got a very strong leg, but there's also a transfer, Andrew Fletcher, who those two guys are battling it out to be who's going to do the, the uh, extra points, field goals, and of course kickoffs. And then Will Gleason is a uh, an Aussie, a left-footed Aussie that they'll, they'll kick it rugby style as well as kick it straight on. So he's going to be interesting too. But you, you mentioned Wonderlick. He's going to be here this summer and certainly he's going to add some depth to both positions. It was announced earlier this morning at a, uh, a breakfast ceremony. Uh, if you are not familiar with the story, Chucky Bowens was paralyzed and ultimately lost his life after an injury on this field here at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium back in the late 1980s. Since then, they have honored uh, the best defensive player, and it's kind of moved around from defensive back to an overall defensive player by allowing them to wear Chucky Mullins' number. It was the number 38, and this year, a guy who you have previously known as D.T. Shackelford, he's changed his name just a little bit. A little, a little more serious now for the sixth-year senior, Detarian Shackelford. DT, as you've known him before, is the Chucky Mullins Courage Award recipient. He will wear number 38 after being granted that sixth year of eligibility uh, by the NCAA. And Richard, what a great choice. A young man had two ACL surgeries on the same knee. First one didn't take, had to go back. So he set out literally two years, got granted that sixth year of eligibility. And so he's the old man in that huddle now. He's the starting middle linebacker. He brings a lot of experience, not only from uh, the, the game, but just from uh, the emotions of, of life. Ole Miss going to uh, do some drill work and some kicking to uh, begin things this afternoon. Uh, then they're going to get into a, a scrimmage format. The format this afternoon, uh, they'll do some – it's all offense against defense. And I realize that football is offense against defense. But they've split the team. It's not a, a team that's split in half where you've got two teams playing against uh, each other. The offensive players in the white jerseys on one side uh, line, the, uh, the defensive players in the blue jerseys, on the opposite sideline. They're trying to keep score today, give some bragging rights going into the offseason. And so what they're doing, Richard, is you got one-on-ones, you got two-on-twos, so they're going to keep score. They're keeping scores down on the field, and, uh, of course, you can go through those rules here before we get started. And they'll go with a best-of-nine competition on third down. So they'll start at third and one, third and two, third and three, and progress all the way out to third and nine. And uh, you'll have first string against first string, offense and defense. Same thing with the second stringers as well. And then uh, when you get to uh, the coming out portion of it, start at the one-yard line and drive it out. You'll get a point, uh, a chance if you go 20 yards or more for the offense. And if the defense is able to hold the offense inside the 20-yard line, they've got a chance as well. Then they're going to get into uh, some real football. They'll start drives at the 30-yard line. You get a drive of 30 or more yards, you pick up a point. A touchdown's worth a couple of points, field goal wor worth a point. And obviously defense has got a chance to pick up some points there as well this afternoon. And then they'll wrap things up with a goal line competition where you start at the 25-yard line, almost like if you were in an overtime scenario, Harry, or, or a late-game situation where you're trying to score uh, to get on the board. You either score or you don't. The offense scores, they get a point. Defense holds them out, they get a point. Well, as, as we all know, they refer to that as the red zone practice. And how important is it once you get in the 20? Ole Miss did a great job last year of, of up and down the field 
based on Hugh Freeze's spectacular offense. But sometimes we struggle, especially I go back to the Missouri game. Richard, we struggle once we got in the red zone. So that's something really accentuated this, this spring, and, and they're going to continue to work on that. So it'll be, it'll be big guys against big guys down there in the trenches, and uh, it'll be fun. You see Hugh Freeze there entering his third year as head coach at Ole Miss, and he's done some special things. He's in elite company, one of only three coaches in Ole Miss history to take his first two squads to bowl games. Just the third guy that's done that. One of them was Johnny Vaught, the other was Houston Nutt. you got to remember, though, Harry, what the, the team that he inherited went 2-10 and ten and was winless in the SEC. They had lost 14 consecutive Southeastern Conference games in two seasons, 15 wins, back-to-back -back bowl victories, and uh, last year wrapped it up in Nashville with a Music City Bowl win over Georgia Tech. You know, Richard, when, when Hugh Freeze came in here, and I've heard him say it, he said, you know, when he analyzed the depth, he analyzed the talent that he had, and, and, and let's be fair, that 2011 season was a group of freshmen that are now seniors, okay, and, but they were all freshmen. And they, and they all participated quite a bit that fall. Obviously didn't have much luck. But what he said was, it may take us three years to have a winning season. Well, we're now in year number three. We've had two winning seasons. We've been to two back-to-back -back bowl games and won both of them. So do you think he might be ahead of the curve? Well, ahead of the curve, yes. But if, if you think he was sandbagging when he said that right out of the gate, I, I think you would be mistaken. Uh, he's really gotten buy-in from uh, each of the last two teams. They've worked hard. You look at the 2013 season, Ole Miss opened with a, a thrilling win on a Thursday night to start the college football season with Vanderbilt. Rebels were able to go on the road to Austin, Texas in front of about 105,000 and get a win against Texas. So they start 3-0 and then go through a pretty rough stretch where you lose to Alabama, play poorly, lose a close game at Auburn, a team that went on to play in the national championship game, and then had a chance to win against Texas A&M. And that, uh, that Manziel guy had a little something to say about it at the end. He's always special, Richard. We, we were fortunate enough to have Manziel at our house two years in a row. Had an opportunity to win both of them. And uh, Johnny Football absolutely carved us up at the end. But, you know, we go back to that Texas-Alabama-Auburn stretch. That was a hard three weeks of travel, and I think it really took its toll over at Auburn that night, especially in the second half, because I felt like the Rebels were toe-to-toe -to -toe with Auburn but just ran out of gas. And, of course, they come to our house this year. We'll see what happens. And uh, Texas A&M, you go to College Station this year. That's going to be an interesting trip because Texas A&M is only using half of their stadium. Major construction going on with Kyle Field. And as I understand it, they're going to basically only open half the stadium at, at, the, at a time. And so those 85,000-seat crowds that you've become accustomed to, you cut that number in half. You, you, you go play in 45,000 in front of 45,000 in College Station, and you don't have Johnny Manziel. It doesn't feel quite as uh, intimidating. And you look at what's coming up this year for Ole Miss. Rebels will open two games in a row away from home. We'll start the season on a Thursday night in Atlanta against Boise State. Then we'll go to Vanderbilt. Nine, ten days later, they're going to play that game at LP Field against Vanderbilt. Two back-to-back -back NFL stadiums, Richard. How, how special is that? And, of course, Ole Miss was, really was scheduled to play Boise State a few years ago. Got with the SEC, changed that to the 2014 season. Of course, the Rebels will be favored going into both those games. But we'll be playing on, on the pro turf. Three in a row at home after that with Lafayette, Memphis, and then Alabama on the 4th of October trip to Texas A&M, Tennessee from the Eastern Division, one of two Eastern Division opponents. Rebels have Presbyterian, that final non-conference game uh, in uh, early November, and then we'll wrap things up the Saturday after Thanksgiving with Mississippi State. And uh, obviously the way the regular season ended a year ago with Mississippi State winning against Ole Miss in overtime in Starkville with a dramatic come-from-behind victory. It was, uh, it's one that Ole Miss fans are looking forward I to. I think the Ole Miss fans have got that one circled already, Richard. Not to mention Alabama and LSU and everyone else, but especially your in-state rival. We get a chance to look down on the field. This is the new Aussie kicker we've been talking about. Richard's had a good spring. Will Gleason, left-footed, does some rugby things. He's kicking straight on now, but uh, loves to step outside that uh, protection and kick it uh, left-footed, which is interesting. The long way from home award goes to Will Gleason. Redshirt freshman from Melbourne, Australia. You mentioned grew up playing rugby, and one of the attributes that you have is uh, he'll go to the left and will kick it rugby style, as you saw him do right there. But he can flip it around and go to the other side as well. He can go to the left and kick it rugby style with the left foot, can go to the right and kick it rugby style with the right foot. I'm not sure exactly how you defend that from a special teams standpoint. 
I, I'm not sure either. And as our old friend Charles Barkley would say, he was amphibious, right? That's but, right. Uh, <laughs> anyway. He was amphibious. He could do it with his left and his right. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Charles. So Gleason certainly will be in the mix for punter for Ole Miss this year. Mentioned Gary Wunderlich uh, a few minutes ago, a, uh, a freshman coming in in the fall. Wunderlich uh, played in, uh, in Memphis at uh, Memphis University School and uh, certainly will figure into the equation. Richard, let's talk about the return guys. Of course, Jeff Scott's been the return guy for Ole Miss for the last two years, did an excellent job, ran a huge punt back against the University of Texas, really broke that game open in the second half. Obviously, Jeff is gone, so we've got some new candidates back there. Trey Elston, number seven, one of our strong safeties. Uh, Anthony Alford, another uh, strong safety, will be in that mix. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see who will win that job. they still got about uh, four candidates they're toying with. Did you see the chance to see Trey Elston come down with the ball? Trey Elston kind of burst onto the scene as a freshman at Ole Miss as a uh, defensive back. Played a significant role a year ago where he's fourth on the team in tackles with 62 for a year. He, he finds himself in, a, in kind of a crowded position, though. Trey Elston has really had a good spring, Richard, and one of the reasons for that is Anthony Alford, the young man that transferred from Southern Miss, had to sit out last year. Coaching staff knew very special how, how he was going through last fall, but uh, he played quarterback down at Southern Miss, but he's a, he's a, a rover safety. He, right now he's backing up Trey Elston, but that competition will continue into the fall, and the good thing about it is regardless of who wins that position, the other one will be playing a lot, and you don't you don't miss a beat. Absolutely do not miss a beat. Anthony Alford is very special, as is Trey Elston. Trey Elston, a uh, guy that came from Oxford, Alabama, just a state to the east, and uh, the guy you were mentioning there, Anthony Alford, he's going to wear number 16 this fall, and, and Harry, he, he's a defensive back from Petal, Mississippi. I, I'm sorry, did he change numbers? 13. He's going to uh, wear number 13. Me, number 13 in the fall. And uh, just was a special player out of high school. Led pedal to the, to the 6A uh, state championship game uh, his senior year. Put up prolific numbers. He was not only good in, in football, he was an outstanding baseball player as well and signed a professional contract uh, with the Blue Jays organization. He does. And, and so what that means is he leaves every late spring, early summer for seven weeks to go play in that organization. And the kids were, I was in their uh, meeting room Thursday, and they came in and they were joking about uh, Anthony Alford. He's the only, only member on, on campus who can have a legal agent, Richard. So he has a baseball agent. <laughs> he will uh, will step away, I guess, at the end of the spring semester as soon as they finish up exams and will go play uh, baseball with the uh, Blue Jays organization. You hear about that from time to time. There, there are certain guys that are so talented that uh, franchises, Major League Baseball franchises, will want badly enough that they will say, okay, yeah, you can continue to play football, but your hours in the summer, and if you're talking about a guy of that talent level, usually you're going to have a school that goes along with it as well so that says, we'd love to have you in our summer weight program, but we want you in the fall. You go play baseball, stay in shape, and we'll get you when you come back. Well, he's a young man that, that has experienced uh, things, Richard, that most of these kids have not. He's, he's in a minor league system playing with guys. Some of them could be 25, 26 years old. So it's interesting that he, he's dealt with that, and then he comes back to play collegially football. And uh, But he, he's a very special young man, a, a really, really uh, uh, good guy, and the Rebels are excited to have him. You talk about an experience not a lot of 20-year-olds have had. Anthony Alford, when he was a senior in high school, after his senior year, played in the Under Armour All-America game in Chicago at Wrigley Field. That's not a, not a thing that a lot of 20-year-olds get, uh, get to do. We're going to get set for uh, some football action to start as they wrap up the drill work here in just a few minutes. It's the Grove Ball on the Ole Miss campus wrapping up the 2014 spring practice. We'll be back. Drill work still going at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium. It's Ole Miss in the spring game here in 2014. Talked a good bit about Bo Wallace, the senior starting quarterback last year for Ole Miss, was very good. Completed nearly 65% of his passes for 3,346 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions a year ago. One of the things that he dealt with throughout the course of the year was arm strength issues. He's not been in a full off-season conditioning program. And Hannah Chalker's on the sidelines. Ole Miss going to try and do something about that this year during the off-season. 
Yeah, Richard, after battling two seasons of injuries, Bo told me he's finally, for the first time, 100% heading into his senior season. And in order to stay that way, offensive coordinator Dan Werner told me he's sending him to a mechanics guru in Tom Couch out in L.A. this May. Now, Couch has worked with some small names. Maybe you've heard of them. Drew Brees, Tim Tebow. And the point of this is to keep his strength and mechanics up so he can be 100% all season. And the funny thing is, is that Werner found him while watching real sports on HBO, so that's one way to do it, Richard. We all hope Bo Wallace can stay healthy all season long. Thanks, Anna. You know, the, the interesting thing, Tom Couch is a guy who's got a big baseball background, Harry. He was a pitcher in the major leagues. In fact, he was the guy in the bullpen that caught Hank Aaron's 715th home run. Well, that's something I certainly didn't know. A little know, trivia Richard. for you there. A little trivia. I'm impressed. <laughs> I didn't know you were born when Hank Williams went. Well, I wasn't. Hey, Karen. I wasn't, but I've seen, the, I've seen the movie. I got you. I've seen the I movie since then. I got you. This seems to make a lot of sense because mechanically, that's one area that, that I think it's important for Bo Wallace. The, the times that he's gotten in trouble from an arm strength standpoint, it seems like there's more going on. There may be some footwork tied to it and, and some consistent release stuff tied to it. I think it's been flexibility, Richard. I, I talked to Paul Jackson, who's our strength and conditioning coach, and they're working on the flexibility every day along with the strength. But I think Bo, with that shoulder issue he's had, I think flexibility has been a big issue. So he has not been able to get the ball up in the correct uh, throwing position. So that's why he looks like he keeps the ball down a little bit low. And so that's the things that they're working on. And uh, I think that's one reason he's going out to the West Coast this summer and uh, continue to work on that with a true professional. You know, you, you, you watch this unfold and, and you say, okay, they're not playing a game right now. I had a conversation with Hugh Freeze like uh, last night. He was really candid um, about the spring game. He said, you know, there's – he said, we're, we're a football team that is still young enough that we can't afford to give up that 15th practice. And, you know, you think about 15 practices through the course of the spring and you go, oh, what does one matter? What does one matter? Well, one matters because it's a still a very young team. Uh, it, there's a few seniors sprinkled in on that defense, but it's basically a very young team. So every day to get better, and I know that's an old cliche, but that's, that's what these coaches are thinking. Of course, you could go back to the model of, okay, let's split the team up and have a scrimmage. Well, do you really see where the Rebels are going to be come fall by doing that? And, and of course, one area that uh, would be hurt by doing that is the offensive lines because the first offensive line is young but very, very athletic. The second one today you're going to see has got some walk-ons just because of some injuries. Uh, we'll have Aaron Morris back, of course, in the summer. He'll be here this fall. We've got a junior college uh, tackle that was signed. And you don't sign junior college tackles, Richard, to have Unless them on the Unless you think bench. they can come in That's and play. That's correct. Named Fawn Cooper. So he'll, he'll be here uh, later on, too. And, of course, Aaron Morris, not Aaron Morris, but the other Morris brother, Chris, not brother, but Christian Morris from Memphis, who transferred in from UCLA. They really had big things with him. He tears an Achilles tendon. So he will not be eligible this fall to play. But, uh, uh, of course, Rod Taylor is a, a four-star rated the number two guard prospect in the country, Richard, out of Jackson Callaway. And they, they've seen enough of him to believe that he's going to help along that offensive line. So will not have a senior on the offensive line come this fall. Two, two centers that will obviously take a lot of snaps in Ben Steele and Robert Conyers are brand new, more athletic perhaps than we had last year, but still learning. Have not started a college game yet. So there's going to be some learning curves, obviously, along the offensive line. But we'll get everybody back in place, and we'll be good to go. Richard Cross, Harry Harrison, Hannah Chalker with you in Oxford, Mississippi for the Grove Bowl. Eventually, they're going to get into a scrimmage situation. Crowd gets a little bit to cheer about the deep through throw offensively. And it's time for us to take a look at the Golden Flake Crunch Time stats. And we go back to the 2013 season and look at the offensive numbers for this Ole Miss team and where they were in the SEC. You see a lot of middle of the pack there. But, but you think about some of the offenses in the SEC, year ago, uh, SEC a year ago, and that's not all bad. 30 points a game. Harry, you remember when 30 points a game would have gotten you better than ninth in the, in the league? <laughs> 30 points a game would have led the league, of course, Richard. But uh, I can remember when Jake – I can't remember it, but I read where Jake Gibbs was the SEC Offensive Player of the Year, and he had 570 yards on, on the single season, Richard. So, obviously, stats and offenses have changed tremendously through the years, and Hugh Freeze brings a wide-open, fast pace, fast break, whatever you, however you want to talk about it, but it works. Third in the SEC in passing a year ago, 283 yards a game, fifth total offense, uh, third down conversion. That's a number you can live with. 
And, and red zone offense, that's an area where Ole Miss really feels like it needs to improve, Harry. Got to spend more time getting into the end zone. And it's not just converting inside the 20, but converting inside the 20 with touchdowns. Yes, and, and you've got to be able to get more physical to do that. And I think uh, we're going to talk about a young man that's been moved from defense to offense. His name is Channing Ward. He's number 11. And he's playing really tight end. Playing tight end. He's 6'5", 273 pounds and runs. He's on the kickoff team, by the way. So you don't put guys on there that, that can't run. So he's really been a plus to really give Evan Ingram some, you know, Evan Ingram was a star last year through about seven or eight games for the Rebels as a true freshman, had a made all SEC freshman team and was second team all SEC even in his freshman year after missing the last few games. But and really changed the offense. Changed when he it went tremendously. Away. It really did. Ross Bjork joins us uh, at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium. He is the athletics director. Hugh Freeze, still a relatively new coach. Ross Bjork, still a relatively new athletics director at Ole Miss. Does it still feel new ever? I like that term, new. You know, when, when I first got here, the first year I tried to use the new guy excuse as long as I could when I made a mistake. That might have worn off by now, but uh, so I like that word, relatively new. Was well, that admitting great mistakes there? You, you, you make mistakes every now and then. That, that happens in our industry. That happens in life. But uh, how you overcome them, right, is, uh, is the important thing. Well, Ross, the exciting thing is when you walk on this campus, I guess the unexciting thing is it's got to find where, somewhere to park. Right, right, but right. the exciting thing is we got cranes everywhere. Well, that's progress, as we say. You know, we, what we say is uh, the short-term uh, pain for the long-term gain uh, by having things, you know, closed right now, but they'll be reopened uh, by the fall. We've got a parking garage under construction. They're about ready to start digging the hole for the arena. They've got the site prepped. Uh, they're tearing down the Rebel Shop. And so you're right, that's progress. And then yesterday we cut the ribbon on the Manning Center and uh, that $12.5 million expansion of that building uh, really sets a tone, you know, I think for excellence. The team meeting room, everybody that's come into that room from pro scouts to other college coaches have said, it's the best room we've ever seen. And so it, it sets a tone uh, that we want to have here for Ole Miss Athletics that uh, we're on the rise. It really is beautiful. It was a $20 million facility, and then we just spruced it up with another 12 or $13 right, million. Right. And a couple of families really made that happen. But I, I want to say something, and I appreciate this, and I hadn't had a chance because it, it happened yesterday. Yeah. Two guys that I played with, right, right. James Reed, Ben Williams, the very two first African-American right. football players here, came in my junior year, very close to both of them. Tell us about that. Well, you know, we, to me, we had to, one, there's a couple things. One, the front door of that building had to be identified. And, and so the Manning Center, the east side of that building with a new parking lot, that'll be done in August. But what do people see when they walk into that building? And what, what hits them in the face? So we had to say, you know, welcome home, welcome to Ole Miss. Um, and then you throw in Ben Williams and James Reed for what they symbolized, for what they went through. The thing I love about them is their men first, and then their pioneers, and then their Ole Miss football players. And so they're great men that we could recognize in a special way to show really who we are today and how far we've traveled as an institution, as a program, uh, with diversity and, and culture and, and society. So it, it, I think it's gone over very well. We, we're very proud of that. And Ross, I thought it was interesting. There was an appreciation on, on Ole Miss's side of things, kind of saying thank you to them, and yet to hear their reaction, there was a lot of appreciation coming back toward the university for that recognition. Both of them said it's the greatest um, you know, honor that they, they've ever received in, in, their, in their life. And, and Olivia Manning said the same thing about her and Archie. So that means we did the right thing when, uh, when you have that type of uh, emotional reaction. Finally gotten underway with some actual play on the field, and we'll quickly revisit the rules. They're beginning things with a third down competition. Third and one, third and two, third and three, third and four. And it's offense versus defense. Whoever comes up with the better percentage of the, the nine third down plays will get a point toward the uh, score that's being kept today. Not a traditional scrimmage, not your traditional spring game, uh, but Hugh Freeze, uh, we're, Harry and I were talking a second ago. Hugh and I talked a, a bit last night, and he talked about the importance of this last practice, this 15th practice, not to just – you know, kind of mail it in and have a game and split teams up, but they needed the actual practice. They do. They need the work, and I, and I think the other thing that they've instilled is, uh, you know, competition in everything that they do, whether it's a drill, whether it's this game. I mean, that takes an engineering major to figure out the points on that, <laughs> but it's competitive, and the competitive spirit uh, that it takes to win in this league, I think, is what our coaches are doing. And, Richard, you, right off the bat, you're getting to see uh, Jeremy Liggins, all 300 pounds <laughs> of him, running a short, off, uh, short uh, yardage offense. So it could be a package for him this fall. They're experimenting with that, of course. Jeremy Liggins, is, uh, he's in 
in there at quarterback right now wearing number 15. 6'3", 296 is what the roster says, and that's that might be generous. He's from Oxford, played at Lafayette High School, spent some time at Northeast Mississippi Community College, and there you get to see Jeremy yep. Liggins come up short. Defense getting the better, him. the big guy there. Did you see who his lead blocker? Channing Ward. You know, what would you call him, 275? Yes. And uh, Nick Parker out there at uh, the tight end, lead blockers for a 300-pound quarterback. So that's a lot of beef coming through <laughs> that hole, but the defense uh, stuffed, they stuffed them. them. They did not make that, and uh, so I guess the defense got a point right there. So once you get Bo back in there, now you got third and long situations. Right. With Jeremy was short yardage situations. Now with Bo directing the offense and five wide here. So here's a third and eighth situation. Bo Wallace will take the snap. Coming up next, we're going to check in with Hannah Chalker and uh, catch one of uh, the former Rebels who's got a new home. There's a shot down the middle of the field, and it's incomplete. Trying to hook up with Quincy Adeboyjo on the plate. Take another look as uh, Tony Connor, the uh, rising sophomore who Harry was so good as a freshman All-American a year ago. Richard, we had uh, four five-star players, and sometimes you go, are oh, these guys overrated? No. That all, all four of them made All-American teams last year. Tony Connor was spectacular. How about Dexter McCluster, a guy that wore number 22 when he was in Oxford? Now he's wearing it in the NFL. You said it, Richard. Former Ole Miss star Dexter McCluster, congrats on signing with the Titans. That's huge. That's very big. You know, um, play here at Ole Miss uh, three hours away, so I expect everybody to come down and show that support. Absolutely, and a hottie toddy. Now, year three under Hugh Freeze. What have you seen so far under his scheme, and what's your expectations for the season? You know what? First and foremost, it starts with character. His character off the field is, you know, second to none. Uh, a, a godly man, uh, and if you have a godly man, you know, you have guys that, that surround you. He's going he's gonna to be contagious to the other. So third year, I mean, I see it going up from here. Thank you so much, Dexter. Good luck this season, Richard. Back to you guys. Thanks, Ann. And a big announcement yesterday from the Titans. They uh, they cut Chris Johnson, who had been the starting tailback, and uh, they've been a salary cap issue there. Could mean a few more carries for uh, Dexter McCluster. Ross Bjork visiting with us uh, in the booth. You hear Dexter McCluster talking about Hugh Freeze and the job that he's done with the program. Hugh, Hugh was actually hired just before you were uh, by mm -hmm. a few months, and, and yet the relationship that the two of you have developed has uh, has been a uh, pretty good working relationship. C.J. Hampton came up with the pass break up there, was wearing number three in the blue jersey, a freshman that was a mid-year enrollee out of Meridian, Mississippi, Harry. Richard, they're very, very high on him. I, I was in, the, in their meeting room on Thursday. He's already 6'1 and 203 pounds. Well, kids should be going to the prom probably next week. But uh, he's really caught on. He's a vicious hitter, and he's really catching on to this uh, to this defense that the Rebels are going to throw. But he, he's backing up, of course, our All-American in Cody Pruitt. There's Jeremy Liggins on a handoff, and he gives it uh, to Eugene Brasley, a guy that's had a good spring, uh, going to perhaps figure into the mix in the uh, in the backfield this coming year. But just your relationship with Hugh Freeze and, and kind of what yeah. you get to see from the inside with, with how he's running well, the program. I love the fact that, you know, here's a guy, Dexter McCluster. Obviously, he's close to our program, but he's not here every day. But he sees the character building. He sees the camaraderie. You know, he sees, you know, really the spirit and passion that Coach Freeze has. And, and that leads to recruiting. It leads to relationships. It leads to passion on the field and the competitiveness. So, you know, what, what I love about coaches is, is he cares about people. What I always tease him about is how do you have time to manage all these relationships between me and his family and recruiting and the current team. And But he does a great job because he's a people person and uh, he, he's emotional and he cares uh, about the young men in our, in our program, first and foremost. Devontae Kincaid scrambling and getting to the outside. And you see what number two might be able to do with his legs. Kincaid, the redshirt freshman, played at Skyline High School in uh, in Dallas. Richard, we had a real a great rush right up the middle of Byron Bennett, who will be a, a, a senior this fall, and started lots of games for the Rebels and uh, was able to get immediate pressure, but uh, just spun out of that, a la Johnny Football, did Devontae Kincaid around the, the left side of that offensive line, picked up the first down. So. He's definitely going to be in the mix for that backup role. Yeah, and Kincaid was one of those guys. He was the MVP of the uh, the Dallas Regional, the Elite 11 camp, and that's then correct. went on to the Elite 11 program that's on ESPN, was a finalist there, and uh, and really performed well. Made an early commitment to Ole Miss two years ago and then stuck with that all the way through the recruiting process and, and kind of fell into that ambassador or recruiter role as a, uh, as a recruit. 
Wallace's pass is complete to the near side. And that's Collins Moore on the reception. The guy that you'd like to stay healthy this year. Collins Moore coming off two, both surgery. I mean, he had surgery on both shoulders. I mean, how many times has that happened? But he but he had it, got hurt against Texas, and uh, didn't get to see a lot of action last year. But uh, he's been had a terrific spring. He's playing the position at Vince Sanders, who's been out all spring with a bum hamstring. It would normally be in there as a starter, but Collins will certainly figure in the rotation coming the fall. He's had a good, really good spring, too, Collins has. He, Wallace he can, sure has. Leads a pass to the far side. There's a freshman that was outstanding. Laquan Treadwell had the ball come out at the end. They're going to say a fumble, and the defense will come up with a turnover after a big pitch and catch from uh, two guys that were pretty familiar with each other a season ago. You never like to see a turnover, but Laquan Treadwell, as you can see, he's a year older, Richard, and, and quite a man. At 6'3 and 215 or 220, he's uh, He's going to be special. He was the 2013 SEC Freshman of the Year, as voted on by the coaches, Freshman All-America, and set the freshman record at Ole Miss with 72 catches. That was only four catches off the all-time record for receptions in a season at Ole Miss. Moncrief. Uh, Dante, yeah, Dante Moncrief. Moncrief. We've got so many Ds, I'm, I'm stumbling <clears throat> right. a little bit there. But Dante Moncrief had set that as a freshman, 31 catches, I believe, so he blew that up by 40. That tell tells you how that, special he is. That was All-American on All-American. Cody Pruitt's the one who came in and punched that from behind. So that's pretty good defense right there. Ryan Buchanan with a pass completion underneath. That's good enough for a first down. And we'll give the offense a, uh, a point there on the side. Time the uh, reception made by Cody Core, junior wide receiver from Auburn, Alabama. Ross, you talked a second ago with construction on, on campus, a new parking garage, new basketball arena, but there are a lot of people that are asking the question, you know, football's coming up. Right. That's part of the big plan. What, what's going to happen to Vault hemingway Stadium and well, how soon? We'd love to be able to close in that north end zone. You know, we're looking at it right now, and, and obviously we need to do something. The, the, the phase that we're in, it's exactly Mark Dotson with a great run here. Mark Dotson trying to take it to the house. Gets inside the 20 and knocked out of bounds at the 15-yard line. So, Richard, when you got that all-out rush coming at you, what do you do? You, you throw a screen and right over the top of him. Of course, you saw who was leading him down the field, Channing Ward, Channing number 11. Ward. So, there's a 275 man. He's embraced man. that position. He has. He's, he's really got that offensive mentality. But what a great uh, run there by Mark Dawson, the, the sophomore out of Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, and, and this is his third spring. He was an early enrollee two years ago, and so just going to be a sophomore on the field but the third spring that he's going through. So stadium expansion. So just like we did last year on the arena, are we good? No, I was trying to okay. do that math in my okay. head. It may be a second spring. Second spring. Going second, spring. Yeah. second spring. But who's counting? So just like we did on the arena, we, we have to ha hire an architect. We have to have an official process through the IHL. So we've got all that done on the north end zone. So now we can really hone in on schedule, on cost, on design, on timeline, on, on logistics of you know, taking out the, the Starnes building and, and redoing those buildings, the FedEx building. We have to add on to the Gillum Center with the weight room and a training room and then be able to, to bowl in the north end zone, probably up to the scoreboard. What that does, it gets us to about 64,000 seats, the ability to expand later and match the south if we ever have that, uh, that demand allows us to build in, in stages. So we're hopeful that we can get some things done to, to start on construction after this season. If we can't, it'll be after the 15 season with the goal to have as many things done by the 16 season as possible. The uh, the number you said 64,000 doesn't do a whole lot to capacity, raises it to 3,000. Right. And, and people hear stadium expansion and they assume that means a lot more seats. Is that not necessarily the goal this time? I, I think uh, in today's world with, with television, with the SEC network, with high def uh, sitting on your couch and watching a, a great game on an 80 inch TV with uh, your beverage of choice, you've got to be mindful of, of capacity sizes. Premium seating will be a, a priority. Expansion will be a priority, but also aesthetics, both in the seating bowl and outside the seating bowl to tie in this. Uh, be it's a beautiful stadium, beautiful campus. Let's tie everything together. So, you know, do we need 72,000 seats right now? Our, our thought is we don't. Let's build it in stages and leave flexibility in that we can go in and add things later on down the road. So if you get to the point where there's demand for 72,000 seats, you've got room to build got it, room but you're not build. stuck with 10,000 empty seats if you don't Correct. need them. Correct. Appreciate you coming by. Thank you, Always guys. good visiting with you. It's uh, an exciting time, and uh, August gets here in a hurry. You know what? It goes by fast. Two years goes by fast. Uh, we love it here at Ole Miss, and uh, we're going to keep it going. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot, Ross. Ross Bjork, Athletics you. Director at Ole Miss. Both teams with the points so far, offense and defense. They're getting good for hitting coming up next.
with you at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium in Oxford for the 2014 Grove Bowl, the Ole Miss spring game. Although it's not exactly a Grove, a little action while we stepped away. Octavius Mathers coming up with a big play with Dante Kincaid on the handoff. Mathers, how about up the gut for about 95 yards? And Harry Kalo Moore running him down. Kalo, a track star at Ole Miss, literally and figuratively. And he's made a switch from the offensive side of the ball to the defensive side of the ball. He has, Richard, and I visited with Coach Womack again and specifically asked him about Kalo. He said, absolutely, he's been a real thrill to have him over there. They're really surprised how well he's picked it up being the corner. You saw right there that speed, able to run down on Octavius Mathers. Mathers was the star in the bowl game, running the football up in Nashville. And uh, he'll be in his third year, and along with he and Jalen Walton. And Jalen's not playing today because of injury. But I tell you, Octavius Mathers will be a big, big part of this Ole Miss offense. Mathers, a junior out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, was phenomenal in high school. One that the Rebels were able to sneak out of that central Tennessee area. Last year, 563 yards, averaged almost six yards per carry. And three touchdowns. Hey, you look at the backfield for Ole Miss with guys that are, are coming back. Mathers and Walton were the two leading ball carriers. You lose Jeff Scott. Bo Wallace was fourth in rushing a season ago, but Mark Dodson could figure into the mix this year and had a couple of bigger guys as well, Jordan Wilkins and Eugene Brasley, who could figure into the mix. Jordan Wilkins has had a special spring, Richard. He's the big back and the Rebels have been missing him, so he's in there now. Continue to work offense and defense. Told you about Kalo Moore a second ago. Let's uh, check in downstairs with Hannah Chalker, who's got more on Moore. Yeah, Richard, I talked to Coach Freeze. One of the biggest storylines coming out of this spring is Kayla Moore from running back to the defensive end position. And Coach Freeze told me one of the reasons is because he was getting too big. His weight was up to around 200, 215 in the weight room, getting ready for running back. He really needs to be at 185 for his success on the track and field team here at Ole Miss. Coach Freeze called him a world-class sprinter, and he needs to be down around 180, 185 to continue his success there. Now, Harry, you just mentioned talking to Dave Womack. I asked Womack about the transition to the defensive end position. He said it's been flawless, and Moore has been a very unexpected surprise at his new position. They are very happy with him, guys. They very, really are, Hannah, and he's one of those six that uh, Coach Womack talked about. He had, as far as quarterback position, he, he's uh, he's playing one of the corners at number four, and, uh, of course, on the weekends, he's been running track with a track team. He's on the 4 by 100 uh, meter relay team, and uh, they are, they're under 40 seconds now, so that's that's blazing. You get a look there at Dave Womack, defensive coordinator. He's a veteran in this business. And almost felt like he got uh, like a new lease on life a year ago. He had some had a, a spring in his step when uh, you were in the bowl game in Nashville last year. Excited about uh, where this team is headed. We'll talk more about this Ole Miss coaching staff coming up next. It's the Grove Bowl in Oxford on CSS. The Grove Bowl at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium in Oxford. Ole Miss's spring game, spring scrimmage, and a new portion of that coming up. How many consecutive postseason bowl games has Ole Miss won? That's the Gulf Shores and Orange Beach trivia question for you this afternoon. Consecutive postseason bowl games, which Ole Miss has won. We'll give you the answer in uh, just a couple of minutes. These drives are beginning at the 30-yard line. You go down in distance, and uh, Ole Miss says Devontae Kincaid in at uh, quarterback right now. And the pass is incomplete. I, I beg your pardon. Not Kincaid, but rather Kendrick Doss, the uh, freshman from Florence, Alabama, who is an early enrollee, came in in uh, mid-semester. Yards uh, or drives will start at the 30-yard line four downs and we'll play it like it's regular football. You go 30 or more yards, you get a point. Two points for a touchdown, one for a field goal. The defense can get points based on their play. Here's Kendrick Doss into the open field. He'll go out across the 45 and runs out of bounds at midfield. Got a big block there at the end as well. Kendrick Doss, Richard, you see right there what he brings. He, he's still swimming, of course. He's only been here 
three months right now, and so he's just gotten introduced to this Ole Miss offense. But one thing you can always do, if you're a good athletic quarterback, you can run. You see right there, Kendrick Doss has got it. And an opening, got some green grass in front of him. and Doss has not necessarily gotten the same attention as he is uh, dropped and sacked for a big loss there. So you have the big gain on the previous third down play, then on a first down, lose a ton. Richard, that's a young man. This this staff is absolutely salivating over. Marcus Haynes, he came in also mid-year, but he came out of prep school, and he's a North Carolina native. And, and the Rebels got on him late, found out about him, and got him signed. But uh, he was a 6'10 high jumper and a sprinter in high school, Richard. He's going to be one of those three rush ins. So Coach Womack and Coach Kiffin are excited about this young man. Here's uh, Kendrick Dahls going to take a shot down the field, and he's got a completion. On the reception offensively that time, Josh Johnson, a wide receiver, a freshman, red shirt from a year ago out of Belden, Mississippi, played at Morville High School. So you get a chance right here, Richard, to see the arm on uh, uh, young Doss, the quarterback. He's only been on campus about three months, but he put it right on the money. And uh, this Rebel offense, we're talking about the third offense right here, uh, has done a good job of moving the football. So Doss, this time going to keep it himself, straight ahead up the middle. And we'll take it down to the 27-yard line. Gain of five on first down. He's a big man, Richard Kendrick Doss. But uh, now, what do you do? You put in a bigger guy. You bring in Jeremy Liggins on a second short yardage, and we've talked, uh, of course, about his size. Uh, hopefully he'll slim down a little before the fall, but he's a big man, and so we're going to try here with probably with a little option offense. No, nope, it's going to be a fake. A little play action there. Liggins gets to the outside and is run out of bounds at the 32 for a loss of five on the play. On the tackle that time, leading the way was Tyler Gray. Also, John Patrick Shirley, shirt freshman from Fairhope, Alabama. One of the young men along that defensive front, Richard, uh, John Youngblood, uh, played a lot last year. He's going to be in the mix also at that strong side defensive end, number 47. Young man, it's in his, uh, in his third year, but he was a red shirt. Liggins got some room up the middle, wanting to throw. And Runs away from the first tackler. Now he starts driving those feet down to the 25-yard line. You hear a reaction from the crowd. That's the idea. Jeremy Liggins could give you in some certain situations big, strong legs and hard to bring down. Well, he's just, he makes it into a scrum, doesn't he? Except it's him against the other six guys on defense. But he's uh, he's a tough young man. He played quarterback in high school, won 32 consecutive games at Lafayette High School right here in Oxford. But uh, He's certainly gotten every opportunity this spring to show that he can play quarterback, and uh, they're not scared to put him in. So here's Liggins on a fourth down play, fourth and three. He'll swing it out. Pass is complete, and how about it's going to be close to a first down. And picked it up. Nice little underneath screen. To, I believe it was number uh, 86. And Jordan Gallagos with the uh, reception. Sophomore squad player for Ole Miss out of Ohio, New Albany, Ohio. Playing that slot position. Jeremy got the ball out. Uh, wasn't a perfect pass, but a good catch there. And this uh, Rebel third team offense is, is moving the football. This pass is incomplete. Tried to go right back to Gallegos in the slot. Let him a little too much. Richard Cross, Harry Harrison, Hannah Chalker with you for the 2014 Grove Bowl at Ole Miss. Culmination of spring practice. Richard, this particular play that uh, Liggins has called up, dialed up the last two times, is, is a big part of the Ole Miss offense. Just run, running those underneath screens to the slot receivers. And uh, now you see Jeremy Liggins all 300 pounds of him. Keeps it himself inside the 10, down to the 8 yard line. That's what you call rumbling and bumbling and stumbling and running over guys at 300 pounds. But uh, move the football inside the 10, pick up the first down and the point and see if the Rebels can score right here. Big guy coming at you. So first and goal here for the offense. It's the third team offense. Handoff is to Nathan Vanderberg. Freshman from Olive Branch, Mississippi. Richard, 
tackle there by number 32 to Mario Strong. It really be a, a, a great backup and middle linebacker. Young man has uh, got himself in really, really good shape, and uh, he's a fierce hitter. He's also a special teams guy. Vanderberg again trying to bounce to the outside. And Does that look familiar? He's dragged down by, once again, to Mario Strong. Right. So that little read option play is uh, working against everybody except to Mario. He's, uh, he's right there to make the tackle. That's exactly what that middle back was supposed to do. But that young man will play a lot on special teams, and he'll be a, the, probably the second or third uh, backup and middle linebacker, but he's going to be a, a real star here before it's done. So no gain there and a third and eight coming up third and goal from the eight yard line. Vanderberg's in the backfield on the left foot or the left hip of Jeremy Liggins, but a motion penalty against the offense. And that's that's something that absolutely you just can't have. That's something that happened too many times last year for the Rebels inside the, the red zone. And of course, that's, that and turnovers has been a big emphasis this spring for this offensive coaching staff trying to eliminate so anytime you, you, you get down and you got an opportunity, you certainly don't need to shoot yourselves in the foot. And right there, the Rebels did so. So third down now coming with goal to go from the 14-yard line. Liggins wants to throw. Looking toward the end zone, dumps it off underneath instead, and then a tackle made at the three. Left it off out of the backfield to Nathan Vanderberg, who was kind of mirroring him as he was flushed from the pocket. We well, gave him an option, Richard, was crossing route, and, uh, and I think Liggins was glad to see him uh, give him that option. I don't think he could have rushed it in. So that's where the drive will come to an end, and with that break in the action, we'll take one as well. It's the 2014 Grove Bowl, Vaughn Hemingway Stadium. Your freeze overseeing spring practice here at Ole Miss. Back with you in Oxford on CSS for the 2014 Grove Bowl, the Ole Miss spring finale. We go back to our Gulf Shores and Orange Beach trivia question. How many consecutive postseason bowl games has Ole Miss won? Rebels have been good in the postseason. They've won six consecutive games between 2002 and 2014. The last loss was to West Virginia in the Music City Bowl. That's where Ole Miss won to end its season a year ago. Birmingham, three trips to Dallas and a trip to Shreveport, a win against Nebraska back in 2002 in the Independence Bowl. Pretty good run for Ole Miss in the postseason. It's a good run, Richard. I think the Rebels have won uh, 22 bowl games all time and uh, played well over 30. I, I think it's up around 35 or 36. So a lot of success. Rebels enjoy bowling and uh, usually take a large crowd with us. Ole Miss has the second string offense in right now. That's Eugene Brasley on the carry. Devontae Kincaid, the quarterback, right now. Which you see the explosion right there with Eugene Brasley. Came here with a, with a bad uh, right knee, had to have surgery, and so he redshirted this past uh, year. And uh, he's back this spring, and you see he really hasn't lost any speed. Brasley out of New Orleans, Carver High School. He gets the handoff again. Here you watch him, you see that he really runs low. Picks up 11 yards and a first down there. And that's good vision, Richard. You see him waiting, being patient to let that hole open up. It's designed to go off the left side. He just kicks it back right behind the right guard and then is able to uh, keep it going. Now, flag's going to come out as Rebel offense was trying to go fast there. It may have gone even a little faster than they could handle. What you got here on this particular unit, Richard, this is the area that uh, offensive line is, is, is an unfortunate struggle because you got a lot of new faces. You've got a couple of junior college guys that are walk-ons on the left side, but all but they're very, very talented. So probably going to get some help uh, out of uh, of one of those. The left guard, uh, Free Joe, number 55, has really had a good spring. He's a young man that's uh, come from Gulf Coast Community College, but it's a little bit uh, second team defensive line has been ahead of the second, the second team offensive line all spring, and I think you'll see that here today. Kincaid out of the shotgun will hand off. This time it's Mark Dodson on the carry. He'll go across the 40 down to the 37 yard line. Dodson's had a nice afternoon. Had a big run earlier in the game. Mark Dodson along with Eugene Brasley. Jordan Wilkins, Octavius Mathers uh, almost scored a long run earlier in the scrimmage. 
the Rebels are very, very talented and very deep in the in the uh, offensive backfield. And the guy you really aren't seeing today, Jalen Walton, could even be the starter. So going to have a lot of options come the fall. This time, Kincaid keeps it to himself, gets to the outside, and shows you some nifty footwork inside the 25, down to the 24-yard line. Good for another first down. Great job there of reading that option, Richard. Let that defensive end uh, come down and crash on the ball. Carey pulls it out, and of course, the young man from Meridian, Mississippi, C.J. Hampton on the tackle there, number three. Mark Dodson back in as the running back. He's got a couple of carries for 27 yards, one reception for 45 yards. Productive day for Dodson. And Kincaid swings it to him out of the backfield again, inside the 15, down to the 10, down to the 5, and into the end zone. Touchdown for Mark Dodson. A 24-yard touchdown reception. He's putting on a show right now. He is uh, a great back out of the backfield. Rich, we're going to get another shot here. To Mark, of course, the Kincaid just uh, checking all his progressions and dumps it off to Dawson in the flat. He uh, makes a tackler miss and right down the Rebel sideline, picked up a block from uh, John Ratliff, number 88, and uh, rushes it in for the score. So get by Kalo Moore there at about the 15-yard line. And Anthony Alford couldn't keep him out of the end zone. Two catches for 69 yards and a touchdown this afternoon for Mark Dodson. And here you see Andy Papanasis coming on for the extra point. Uh, he may be in the lead for this uh, kicking position going into the fall. Papanastos, a redshirt freshman from Montgomery, uh, Montgomery, Alabama, bangs it through. and White team's taking the lead. The offense is taking the lead over the defense. Got a break in the action. Back to Oxford after this. It's the Grove Bowl on CSS. Back with you at the Grove Bowl in Oxford. And there you see a guy who was a big part of the offense a season ago for Ole Miss until an injury ended his season. Evan Ingram, freshman a season ago. Had an outstanding year, and he's picking up a little relationship where they left off before the injury. Mo Wallace going to keep it himself, and he'll be touched and knocked down at the two-yard line. Last year, catching the football, Evan Ingram for Ole Miss had 21 receptions, 268 yards, and three touchdowns. He was averaging 33 and a half yards per game, had six starts and played in eight games, Harry, before missing the last five. Richard, he also gave us that, uh, that missing link from a tight end position that so rather than just having to go downfield with it, you had someone that, that worked behind those linebackers crossing routes and had a really long run against one of the games earlier in the season. I forget which one, like a 70 or 80 yard catch and run, but uh, he really adds another dimension to this passing game. And of course, Channing Ward will help uh, accentuate that also. But uh, right there, you saw just a, a fade route with uh, well, back shorter, Laquan Laquan Tread, shorter yeah. throw to Laquan Tread, Treadwell. And, Treadwell. and you get a you get a change this year. Last year, Laquan Treadwell spent the year in the slot, had a ton of catches, but it wasn't necessarily for a ton of yards. You look at 72 catches and see him under 700 yards. A little surprising. This year, he makes a move to the outside, really playing the position that Dante Moncrief played last year. That's exactly what he did. They moved him outside, took Quincy out of Borgio and moved him inside. Quincy's uh, about the same height, but weighs about 190, where Treadwell's about 215, 220. So you got speed on the inside. Not that Treadwell can't run, but you got a much bigger body on the outside that can go up on the jump balls and come down with the catch. So that's a great combination when you take number eight and number one and put them on that side. That's uh, They're going to produce a lot of catches for you. So after a false start penalty, they move it back to the six-yard line. There you see Quincy out of Boijo and Quan Treadwell, both part of that freshman class, now sophomores that was so heralded a year, to, a year ago. Really delivered results. Wallace up the middle. He'll get to the one-yard line. It will be touched down there by Cody Pruitt. Cody Pruitt's a guy that had an off-season uh, off decision to make. Do I stay or do I go? With more on that, here's Hannah Chalker. Yeah, Richard, he told me the money of the NFL was tempting, but he has some unfinished business to do, and that is to get revenge over Mississippi State in the Egg Bowl this year. The All-American and All-SEC also told me he loves the town, he loves the people, and once you come to Ole Miss, it's hard to leave, and I have to agree with him, Richard. 2013 All-America first team from the Associated Press, USA Today, Lindy's Magazine. Coaches voted him a first-team All-SEC player. 
was a finalist for the Thorpe Award. And Harry, he led the SEC last year with six interceptions. And if we're being honest, that number could have been more than it was. It could have been, Richard. You see, on fourth and short here, Jeremy Liggins. Third, Jeremy Liggins pushes it in the end zone. But you're right. Cody Pruitt, I had a chance to visit with him, too. And uh, uh, he probably dropped, and he'd tell you, another five or six. So he could have been in double, double uh, digits as far as interceptions. But uh, look at big Jeremy right here pushing that, that uh, scrum into the end zone. And now the, the Rebel offense has scored it, lining up for the extra point. Well, the last two offensive groups out there have scored touchdowns. The second team offense on their last possession drove it down, scored a touchdown. This time the first team offense able to stick it in the end zone. The highlight play was the big play from Bo Wallace to Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram coming out of the backfield, just ran a wheel route down the opposite sideline and got behind the defenders. And, you know, when you get a, a linebacker, having to cover him it's a total mismatch because they just can't run with Evan Ingram young man out of Atlanta who can really fly I spent some time talking today about CJ Johnson and the the position move with him from the defensive side of the ball to tight end I, I think or excuse me not CJ Johnson but uh, Channing Ward Channing Ward I beg your pardon another defensive end it, it, two guys that came in together big part of that defense but Channing Ward making that move, and, and I think has really surprised everybody with how efficiently he's made the move. How much do you see him as part of the passing game? I mean, he's looked good blocking, you know, he can, can do some things. You like him in the passing I, game? I do like him in the passing game. I don't, I don't think you're going to see the same type of receiver as you see with Evan Ingram where you're running across the field. and those. That's types. 60 pounds difference, have you think? Exactly, but uh, you're going to see the, the, the bootleg actions. You're going to see the crossing routes underneath linebackers, short passes, if you will, you know, the dump offs to, to Channing and then let him let him run with it after the catch. I know I would, as a DB, I'd hate to have to be tackling a 275-pound tight end that can run. This pass is complete on the far sideline to Cody Core. It's Ryan Buchanan back in at quarterback. Buchanan was a standout at Jackson Prep. He's a four-star recruit from ESPN, scout, rivals, 22 touchdown passes, and a state championship his senior season. Hands off to Brasley here. Loss of a yard on the play. And you saw right there just the, the play before Richard delivered a strike out to Cody Core. Big number 88 is going to certainly be in that uh, offensive wide receiver mix come fall. But uh, Ryan just uh, threw it on the money. Third and a yard here. Brasley gets the hands off, handoff, tries to spin his way across the 40-yard line. Looks like he's got just barely enough for the first down. Keep the drive alive. That's what you got to do on third and short. Ryan Buchanan running that read option. Decided, gonna, decided to let that uh, that uh, running back keep it, but uh, that's yes, it. they moved the chains. That, well, okay, they do. They, they, they signaled fourth down and then decided to move the chains after all. I was going to say, if uh, that's the spot you get in the regular season, Hugh Freeze might be looking for a review. Here's a sack in the backfield. little land shark action from Marquise Haynes yes. and John Youngblood. Both men we've talked about early, but Marcus Haynes and, and John Youngblood just uh, beat the tight end block and got in the backfield. Awful bootleg action. Ryan Buchanan, as soon as he, he makes that turn, he's staring at two defenders. Richard, really not anywhere to go. So he, he's, he's being hit live today. Bo Wallace being the only guy that uh, they're not hitting live. Every other quarterback is getting the opportunity to get tackled. So it's a real, it's a real scrimmage as far as that's concerned. So second and long, Buchanan avoids the rush, looking to take a shot down the field. He's got Cody Core, and it is broken up. Under through that time, Cody Core and Carlos Davis with the defensive breakup. A good throw, a little bit underthrown. That was. We actually have two 88s. That's John Ratliff right there out of out of. Nah, I beg your pardon. It's double number thing. It's out of control. <laughs> well, it will. Let's go downstairs and check in with Hannah Chalker. Moncrief, Dante, a lot of talk about you taking your talents to the next level. Oh, yeah. Man. It's just, it was just a blessing to get the opportunity to do that. Uh, first to ever do it from a high school. So I just took it in and took it off for a blessing and gave God thanks. You had a really good pro day. I saw you out there. How did you feel after that? I felt good, man. I just had to show the, uh, a lot of NFL teams what I could do. And uh, right now, seem, they seem to like it. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. All right. Good luck going forward, guys. Back up to you. Thank you, Hannah. And thanks to Dante Moncrief. How special he, a receiver he was for Ole Miss. Moncrief last year 
59 catches, 938 yards, six touchdowns, and 10 touchdowns. See, uh, 10 touchdowns his sophomore year. He was a money receiver, Richard. If the Rebels had to have a big catch in a big game, he was the guy they certainly went to. He's the same type body as the Locon Treadwell. He's a 6'3", 220 type receiver that can run. Obviously, at the, the pro day in Indianapolis, uh, the combine had great workouts. So you, anybody that can stand and brawl jump over 10 feet, Richard, is really considered freakish. And uh, Dante's been up around 11 feet. So he really is. And ran a 4'4 at 220 pounds. So that's special talent that tested very well. And uh, we're hoping Laquan Treadwell picks up right where Dante left off. Offensive possession begins here at the 30-yard line. Old Miss Grove Bowl on this April afternoon. You can see it again, an encore edition of this coming up later, but you've got more spring football coming up as well. Next Saturday, 1 Eastern, Georgia. And Athens will have their spring game, followed by Mississippi State's spring game in Starkville. That's at 4 Eastern, 3 Central. For a complete list of games coming up, visit css-sports.com. Carry straight ahead, and that is a first down for the third team offense. In on the carry, Nathan Vanderberg. A lot of uh, different running backs you see in Richard, and a lot of different backups. This is third team that's uh, being led by. Uh, Liggins is in now. You had Kendrick Dawson, Dawson in just earlier. a moment ago. Now Liggins out of the shotgun. A bit of a high snap. And off to Vanderberg and stumbles for a loss of a yard. Trying to see who's actually playing that center position. I think that's, uh, I think that's Robert Conyers, and he's certainly going to be in the in the war to, to win that starting job. But uh, you know, a, a snap there that wasn't very good, but this was much better. Ligon's trying to hit uh, one of the tight end positions and uh, broke it up. Elliot Marcus in that time couldn't hang on to it. The freshman here in Oxford played at LaFayette High School, redshirted a year ago. In the son of uh, Mike Markison, who uh, coached the offensive line here some years ago, Richard. Ligon's in trouble and it's wrapped up and he's dropped on the play. And on the tackle there, Billy Bush. Bush, the senior from St. Louis. Well, you know, these defenders, Richard, occasionally you got to mix it up a little bit. Came with two blitzes, two guys off the short side of the field. And, uh, that uh, confused Liggins just enough. He couldn't figure out what to do other than just uh, stand and get hit. So the offense with a 9-7 lead with the blue team. The defense will pick up a couple of points after the stop. And we'll get set to do it again. Looks like we're back to one-on-ones here, Richard. This ought to be interesting and see if uh, this offense can move it down the field and score. But when you talk about this number one defense, Richard, you talk. You start with C.J. Johnson at one end and Fidal Brown, the transfer, has come in here. It's a big body at 6'5 and 280. It's a strong side defensive end. And then you got Robert Kim Dietschy, who's, who's uh, permanently been moved to defensive tackle, and Isaac Gross over the nose. Uh, that's going to be a good start. So Bo Wallace back in at quarterback. It's the ones versus ones offense and defense. And Wallace is going to take a shot down the field, and the pass is broken up. Mike Hilton that time in coverage defended the pass intended for Collins Moore. Yeah, good toss, Richard. Great, great uh, action in the backfield. Freeze everyone momentarily, and then a good toss by Bo. But uh, that's just a great job by number 28, Mike Hilton, who saw a lot of action last year as one of those corners. And so it's uh, he did a good job of breaking the ball. Rebel secondary that is as experienced going into a year as you've seen in some time. And there, another breakup on the opposite side of the field. That's Sinquez Golson breaking on the ball. 
And you probably just got to look at your two starting corners making plays on opposite sides of the field. Yes, and then you mix in a Derrick Jones, who's a 6'2", 6'3". His first on to the scene. Yeah, came in as a wide receiver, moved him to corner, and played in lots of games last year. They, he's got a huge upside. They're very, very high on him. So secondary, uh, more depth there than we've seen in, in quite a while. Wallace will throw in complete high and past the outstretched arms of Laquan Treadwell. And so the offense this time goes three and out. It's a stop for the first team defense, and they will draw closer on the scoreboard. And we'll take a timeout as well. It's the 2014 Grove Bowl on CSS from Vaughn Hemingway Stadium in Oxford. More coming up. with you at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium in Oxford for the 2014 Grove Bowl. SEC baseball is on CSS all season long. You can tune in tonight as Vanderbilt visits Tennessee live at 7 Eastern for a complete schedule of games. Check them out online, css-sports.com. Vanderbilt with a 6-4 win over Tennessee last night. Busy day-to-day -day in Southeastern Conference baseball. The league's been good this year, too, and, and as even as you can remember you know, a season ago, you think about LSU and Vanderbilt kind of running away from everybody else, top to bottom. Very impressive so far this year. Here is Devontae Kincaid back in at quarterback, and he completes a pass to the far sideline. That's Cody Core on the reception. That's that's the number 88 we saw quite a bit of last year, Richard. Cody Core certainly will be in that uh, offensive mix and uh, a beautiful thrown ball. Just a quick out, you know, nothing you can do as a defender, but just try to make sure you get the tackler down and uh, as the tackler. But uh, Kincaid having a good day, as is Ryan Buchanan. So both these guys running neck and neck as a backup quarterback uh, option going into the fall. off a big play for Itavius Mathers. He'll go down to the 40-yard line. Great vision, Richard. Just, you, you know, you're going to run that read option, but you got to wait and be patient. And he runs back right by Tamario Strong. Tamario did not make that tackle. Itavius made him miss, and he picks up the first down. Itavius Mathers last year, three touchdowns rushing. His long run last season was 64 yards. If you go back to the year before Richard in the bowl game and against Pittsburgh and uh, Birmingham, had a huge run in the fourth quarter. Broke through and went about the same distance. So a play right there that he should have been tackled for a loss, was able to uh, make a couple guys miss, picked up some positive yards. So that's what you got to have out of a running back. And Itavius is going into his junior season. He's had a lot, a lot of reps, and uh, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Second and eight, pass is complete to the near side. This young man they're talking about, uh, number 88, he's the other number 88. We've talked about Cody Core, but uh, John Ratliff has been on campus. He was a walk-on. Brother Robert played quarterback for us. And, uh, he's, uh, he's a guy that's got a bright future. You see right then, they go right back to him. He makes a, a, a catch that's really behind him and uh, pulls that ball in. But he comes out of his routes really good, strong hands. And he's going to play a lot too good. So this is receiving core. You add in a couple guys at the Rebels have signed one, Mark L. Pack. They all Harris out of uh, Jackson will be in that mix as well. But it, uh, things are still in great hands. Ratliff picked up three. That pass uh, behind Channing Ward. Channing Ward who's running a slant route there. I would like to see Channing catch it. I'd like to see what he does with it after it down in the, in the red zone. It'd be interesting to see. But uh, unfortunately, the pass f falls incomplete. Thrown behind him a little bit by Kent K. This time, Channing Ward lines up on the left side, kind of that H-back slot. And a keep this time for Kent K. He gets to the outside, the 15, and spins his way down to the 12-yard line. That will be good enough for a first down. Offense with a one-point lead right now over the defense in this ball game. You're just joining us. So a point system aside, it's not that our actual score is nine to eight offense versus defense. Bouncing to the 
outside is Jordan Wilkins. Redshirt freshman Wilkins out of Cordova, Tennessee, and Memphis area. Not only is he a big back, Richard, you can see right there he's got that burst of speed and get outside, but he gives you that big body. You get down here inside this 10-yard line, you got to have somebody, if there's not a hole, that can move that pile. And I think Jordan Wilkins will give the Rebels that opportunity to come fall. Second and seven here for the offense, and Wilkins spins off the first man, fights his way into the end zone for a touchdown. I think that might have been your point. I think that was the point right there. You got to break through that first tackle, get in the in secondary, and then you don't come down until you get in the end zone. And Jordan Wilkins right there is going to be heavily into the mix uh, come this fall, but uh, you see there exactly what you got to have once you get in the red zone. So Jordan Wilkins into the end zone. And the offense, the white squad, moves to a four-point lead, 12-8. I'll try to add to that with the extra point. Which is worth what, like a tenth of a point or something? Well, you, you get two points for scoring the touchdown. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And you get to practice the extra point. Well, Ross Bjorn said earlier when we visited with him, you need an engineering major or an engineer to figure out how the scoring works. And, well, we've got an our, engineering major. I am not. We've got our accountant, Daniel Snowden, off to our left over here. He's keeping a good score of that. And if, uh, if it's not correct, then we'll blame it on him. They're moving toward the goal line portion of the scrimmage this afternoon. And the way they're doing that, they're starting drives at the 25 yard line, trying to take it into the end zone. The red zone action. This is where it all is, guys. Hey, and I can I can handle the scoring on this. If the offense scores a touchdown, they get a point. If they don't score a touchdown, the defense gets there a point. There you go. Try to keep it simple going into the fourth quarter. So the defense needs some stops here. The blue squad. Bo Wallace will bring the first team offense back out. 25-yard line is where these drives will begin. You score, you get a point. You don't, the other team does. Wallace looks across the middle of Quan Treadwell with nobody close, and the offense will get the first point. Made it look easy, didn't they? A little play action. You, you, you send that uh, running back out in motion. Kind of freezes everyone, and then Quan Treadwell wants that uh, post route. He's just wide open. That's going to be a combination, Richard, we're going to get to talk about a lot come fall. Bo Wallace to Laquan Treadwell. So, on the very first play from the 25, the Rebel offense uh, puts up the, the point, and uh, I think the Rebel defense is getting an earful as they come off on the blue sideline. Been a big competition all spring between these two units, and of course today is the final day of spring practice. They had to let 15 practices in the first two or three days. They had to go in shorts to kind of get acclimated, but since then it's been uh, it's been a lot of hitting. It's been very physical and able to do that because of what we talked about earlier. Been a lot of depth. Ryan Buchanan, the quarterback here, that's Channing Ward in motion. That a false start over on the right side of the offensive line. And Richard, while we're listening to the official, we're talking about the offensive line. Davion Johnson, the young man that got flagged right there. He's a redshirt freshman. He's he's starting at that right tackle on the second group. And then you've got Carlton Martin, who was a converted defensive tackle playing right right guard. And then two junior college walk-ons who are going to see some action on the left side with Robert Conyers being the, the center. Here's first and 15. And again, movement. This time it's going to be Eugene Brasley, the running back, who moved early. He'll go to the sideline, and Jordan Wilkins will come back into the game. So the always popular first and 20 coming up. And as a coaching staff, you don't really have a lot of biscuits you can throw at third and 20 or first and 20 or whatever it is at 20. At least first and 20 you can chip away at a little Pick bit. Pick up seven or eight on first down and try and get it into a more manageable distance. Here's Buchanan. He'll take a shot down the middle of the field, and that pass is complete down to the 15. Or you could just pick it all up in uh, one play. That's what they did there. Cody Core on the reception. And Kalo Moore is down on the play. Well, you, you got play action. It freezes, and, of course, Cody Core is running that uh, post route. 
Richard, he's got uh, the defender on his hip. Ball is really, really well thrown. That's that's Kalo Moore, and Kalo Moore really was tagged by his own defensive and, comrade. You, know, you, you made a point earlier today that C.J. Hampton is known as quite a hitter. He's a December enrollee or January enrollee on this football team. Going to be a true freshman this fall. Well, head hunting back there. He was trying to knock Cody Core off his feet, and he took Kalo Moore out as well. So a first down here after the 20-yard gain. This pass from Buchanan complete out to the far sideline. Again, that's Core on the reception. And you, and you see the strength of Orion Buchanan, Richard. He's uh, he's able to figure out, go through the progressions, figure out what receiver should be open against this defense and just delivers a strike and uh, a good job of uh, of delivering this second unit down inside the five. Gives it to Jordan Wilkins, who is stopped after the gain of a yard. Second and goal from the three for the offensive unit. Yeah, I think Jordan Wilkins is a young man you're going to see a lot of this fall. I mean, obviously on goal line situations, he gives you that body you don't get with some of these other guys. Jordan Wilkins on the fake, and it's Ryan Buchanan keeping it himself into the end zone. Three-yard touchdown run for the redshirt freshman out of Jackson. When we, when we said that Ryan Buchanan really didn't run that much, we didn't mean he couldn't. We just said that's not what he chooses to do. But you can see it right there at about 215. He's able to push the file, pile, get into the end zone for the score. And uh, once again, he and Devontae Kincaid right there neck and neck trying to secure that second position. You know, as a junior in high school, Ryan Buchanan rushed for 433 yards the first year that he was the starting quarterback at Jackson Prep through for a little over 1,300 as a junior and just shy of 1,500 as a senior in an offense that ran the football a lot. They did say, not throw it a lot. I was going to say probably 85% of the time they were running option and running football. And of course, he got in on that mix. But uh, very strong arm, was heavily recruited throughout the southeast. And uh, four-star quarterback along with Defonte Kincaid came in together in this really talented freshman class that were uh, uh, freshmen a year ago. And uh, so we'll you see know, the who reality is we've, we've talked a lot about the quarterback competition for the backup role. Bo Wallace certainly cemented as a starter uh, with, with just a prolific career to this point, 40 touchdown passes over the last two seasons. Um, and, and, and likely this year will slide quickly into the number two slot all time for touchdown passes for a quarterback at Ole Miss. But you think about the, the battle back and forth between Kincaid and Buchanan and a great situation to have if you're Hugh Freeze, two guys that, that you like a lot and who really aren't separating themselves, not because they're not playing well, but because both are playing well. That's a great problem to have, Richard. You see Jeremy Livings, Li Jeremy Liggins trying to wind up and uh, throw a little go route down the opposite sideline. Fell incomplete, but uh, was under pretty heavy rush from Deterian uh, D.T. Shackelford. Put trying to push up with Kale Luke on the outside, the red shirt freshman from Clinton, Mississippi. It looks like they got DT actually playing a little defensive end. He has not been in that position all spring, but uh, looks like he's lining up a little defensive end. So Shackelford working primarily at linebacker. If you missed it earlier, Terry and Shackelford awarded the Chucky Mullins Courage Award. He will wear number 38 this year. On the carry there, Vanderberg takes it down to the 10-yard line for a gain of 15 on the carry. Vandenberg's got a little shake to him, Richard. He's, uh, of course, caught heavily buried in that depth chart, but uh, young man's having a good day after the uh, option handoff from Jeremy Liggins. Nine is the number that you've gotten used to seeing from Shackelford. They have to adjust a little bit, but I'm going to talk about a deserving recipient. This ball batted away in the end zone. Good coverage there. By Carlos Davis. Liggins is trying to get it to Kale Luke on the outside. Because Kale Luke is uh, the son of uh, Tom Luke, who's uh, one of the operations coaches here for Ole Miss and the nephew of Matt Luke, our offensive uh, line coach and co-coordinator. Young man's got a bright future at the receiver position. Just to throw you a curve, Richard, there's two 28s playing corner, so I think that was the, the Kendrick King broke that one up, not Mike Hilton. Vanderberg 
Vanderberg with the carry. So a third down and eight coming up for the offensive unit. And a break in the action. Hugh Freeze talking with his quarterback, Jeremy Liggins. And you're afforded that luxury here in spring, Richard. Uh, of course, come the fall, you, you don't get that. You don't get that luxury as that play clock is winding, you know, out there in the middle of the field. But uh, of course, Jeremy Liggins trying to, as you see, throw it right there, leading a tight end. He was trying that time to hook up with Taz Zettergren, the sophomore from Senatobia, Mississippi, just past the outstretch hands that time. And we'll see fourth down and eight from the nine-yard line. And whether that was a tip from Hugh Freeze who was going to be open or just Jeremy did a good job of reading his progressions. He did pick out the right receiver, made a good pass just a little too far. So here's the fourth down play from Liggins. He'll swing it out to the near side. Vanderberg with the catch, but is run out of bounds just inside the five. And so the defense will come up with a stop. Let's go downstairs and check in with Hannah Chalker. Thanks, Richard. 17 members of the Old Miss family and 10 players, including senior Sedarius Bryant, D.T. Shackover, took a mission trip to Haiti over spring break where they lived at Camp Marie for just shy of a week. They worked to open up a gravel road so trucks could get through with the community's leading financial resource, the papaya fruit. A great way to spend this guy's spring break, Sedarius Bryant said. It was an eye-opening experience. It was a life-changing experience, and it makes him realize he takes small things for granted, like going to class and going to football practice including the Grove Bowl out here today, Richard. Thank you, Hannah. That's like getting a bunch of football players to help you build a road either. Uh, that's a great way to get it done. I talked to some of those guys. It was really an eye-opening experience, Richard. They went to a part of Haiti, you know, even the, the news coverage didn't get to after the huge issue they had a few years ago. But uh, these guys had a really eye-opening experience, a good trip for about 20 of them, and uh, they came back all very blessed from it. Bo Wallace back into the game at quarterback. Dumps it off out of the backfield to Brasley. He'll dance his way down to the 18-yard line for a gain of seven on first down. And Richard, that, that's what Bo Wallace gives you right there. Went through, went through all of his progressions. No one downfield open and just simply had the, you know, the know-how to dump it off to a Brasley. And, you know, didn't pick up a big game, although it turned out to be about eight. Uh, but that's what you got to have. When, when there's no one open downfield, just find someone to get rid of it. Eliminate the sack. Don't make it a negative play, and that's what Coach Freeze preaches about. Uh, no negative plays in this offense. Set up a screen across the middle there. Brasley's able to catch it in traffic. He's dropped immediately. Cody Pruitt on the tackle. And the defense had an all-out uh, blitz on Richard. Now I wonder why Brasley was not going to pick up the blitzer, but he just ran right by him because he was a screen guy. He was the underneath screen guy that's supposed to be getting the football. He did, but a uh, good tackle right there by the defenders, and uh, that's third and short. About three here for the first team offense. Wallace, quick pass, it's complete, and that's good enough for a first down. Evan Ingram. Reception. Tight end, yes, but not tight end in the sense. Three point stance lined up just outside the tackle. No, that's not the tight end that uh, we remember from two or three years ago, you know, when uh, we had the, the two big guys in here. Evan Ingram's. Mostly he's going to be in a flex position, Richard. That means he's going to be off outside the tackle a few yards, and that allows him to get downfield and run like we know he can. It gives you more options with him. Of course, Bo in the red jersey, he's playing two-hand touch today, but he did make the right read. Uh, the, the, uh, he pulls that ball out. Uh, nobody able to run up, up, up the middle, and he just comes around the end. But it, it's a, in a two-hand touch game, uh, they call him down right there. Probably just as well for everybody involved. But Wallace through the air this afternoon. Nine out of 17, 150 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions. He'll go back to the air. He was looking for his second touchdown of the day. And Evan Ingram really hit on that play. But there's a flag, Richard. I think we're going to have a, a either a holding or a pass interference in the end zone. So the Rebel offense will have it uh, probably first and goal on the one. Both Ingram and Shackleford a little slow getting up on the play. Well, it was definitely a collision in the end zone, but we don't need to have an Ingram banged up. He's obviously very special to this offense, and uh, 
when a pie to get it. So Shackelford called for the hold. The ball will now be spotted at the four yard line. It seems to be okay. We got a chance to look at that again, Richard, as we see. If you can't, if you can't defend him, just hold him and uh, keep him from making the touchdown. But uh, does pick up first down inside the five. Probably a pretty good play there by the uh, sixth-year senior Shackelford. See if he can come up with a stop here. Jeremy Liggins in. A heavier package at quarterback. He's going to take a shot to the deep corner of the end zone, trying to get it to Treadwell. Jeremy Liggins is passed. Kind of floated in the air out to Treadwell. Threw it a long way, but unfortunately threw it out of the end zone. Of course, he was well covered by uh, Sinquez Golson, who was a starting field corner for uh, the Rebels much of last year. He'll certainly be in the mix uh, from cornerback position. Uh, really has gotten better. He'll be, he's an upcoming senior and has played a lot of snaps. You think about some battles going on in practice when you go offense against defense. You got Golson lined up against Quan Treadwell, and Mike Hilton lined up with. Collins Moore out of Boyjo or some of the others, Evan Ingram sometimes just trying to get it to Ingram incomplete. Trey Elston was covering. So Darius Bryant dropped back into coverage as well. Lots of battle. That's, that's what competition does for you, Richard. You got, you got enough players now to go go live throughout spring and uh, very physical. And, uh, and these guys realize it's been a lot of different variances to keep this uh, intensity level throughout spring. Part of it's the fact that you know there's somebody right behind you pushing you. Part of it's the fact that Paul Jackson and his staff have gotten these guys really in great football shape, and uh, you can tell by just looking at them on the hoof. And uh, part of it's just motivation from Hugh Freeze and his staff. But uh, it's been a great spring. Whew. Vicious hit right there. Mike Dodson Hilton holds on the ball. Meeting up with Mark Dodson at the three-yard line. Wallace looked the receiver off to the left and then came back to the right. He had Dodson and Hilton. Woo! Right there. Just a good lick. And then, of course, Dodson's a very physical back, but you go with Mike Hilton at real speed. He was a Husky here, Richard. So he was a safety slash linebacker. Now he's out at, out at corner. So that's what he gives you is a big hitting area when he plays that, uh, that boundary corner. So here's a fourth and goal. Wallace bobbled the snap, and the defense will get a stop on this sequence. And guess who was in his face? Isaac Gross, Richard Day. Uh, doesn't weigh with about 250 pounds. Very, very, very quick off that nose guard. We'll take a timeout. Back to Oxford after this. It's the 2014 Grove Bowl on CSS. Back with you at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium for the 2014 Grove Bowl, the end of spring practice for the Ole Miss football team. Ryan Buchanan is in at the quarterback spot. And the guys in the blue jerseys, the defensive groups, turned it up a, little, a notch the last couple of drives. Well, they have, Richard. Number 34, Taylor Polk, a young man who came in as a walk-on freshman out of Brandon, Mississippi. has had a great spring at one of the weak side linebackers' positions. You saw him right there coming off the blitz, and all Ryan Buchanan could do was just simply throw it out towards in the area of Brasley just to get rid of the football. Good plays by both these young men. But uh, you're right. The defense has uh, got an earful. I talked with you earlier about this defense and there's reason for optimism only five players who made a tackle last year are not on this team 16 of the top 20 tacklers are back this year for Ole Miss of course you lose Mike Mary who was an anchor in the middle of that defense and had 52 tackles Cameron Wiggum defensive end is gone lose to Hendrick Collins and Charles Sawyer on the outside Cliff Coleman as well Cliff Coleman's actually back Richard. he's back Cliff Coleman's back uh, He's had a good spring. Number six. Well, how about that? Yeah. We got him back. He's one of those guys that's in the Senior mix. this year. Yes. Out of Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. So how about that? Four guys that made a tackle a year ago. Not on this 2014 team. And, of course, you you, you take D.T. Shackelford and you take uh, uh, Christian Russell, a young man we hadn't really talked about today. He's uh, 
the guy that uh, came in from East Mississippi Community College in mid, mid-semester. He's a junior college guy, backing up DT. Fadal Brown, a defensive end. You really have, you don't lose you know, because you lost some snaps, Richard. you got a lot of players in here that know how to play this defense. and uh, That's why Coach Womack and his staff are very excited about what they've got to, to work with going into the 14th season. Vanderberg on the carry, picked up five yards on first down. Kendrick Doss back into the game at quarterback. On the tackle, number 34, Taylor Cole. Looks like we're down to threes on threes here, of course, but uh, still got some guys to keep an eye on. Of course, to get uh, flexed out to the left side of this offense is Channing Ward, big number 11, is playing tight end for the Rebels. And uh, love to see him catch a pass, Richard. He was lined up at the slot at the top of your screen. Doss breaks to the outside and will get inside the 15 and pick up a first down for the offensive unit. Who has a three-point lead in this game, 14-11 over the blue team. I said this game in, in this series of drills and well it's it's a it's a full bore practice, let's put it that way. Not not a, a real practice game. with points assigned for success in different segments of the practice. Of course, the young man who made that tackle, Taylor Polk, we talked about him momentarily ago, and uh, he's uh, had a good spring and playing that weak side linebacker. You got Sidarius Bryant, you got Keith Lewis, you got Taylor Polk, and of course, you're missing number four, Denzel Kimdichi, which you should be back this summer. Stop made there. Number three, it's like Mike Hilton, isn't it, coming off the corner? Number 28. He's in on the play. Hilton's had a good spring and a busy day today. They picked on him, but not very successfully. Junior out of Fayetteville, Georgia, Sandy Creek High School. Hilton last year was fifth on the Rebel team in tackles with 52 tackles. Five and a half tackles for loss, had an interception. Doss takes a shot across the middle of the field. It's tipped into the air. Uh, like David Kamara, number 29. He's also from the Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia area. Playing safety in that third group and did a good job. Kamara from Loganville played at Grayson High School. High school teammate of Robert Kimdichie. It was just Doss trying to hit uh, Channing Ward coming across the middle, I think. But uh, it should have been intercepted perhaps, but uh, was not. But well defended. Well, you're tough on those DBs. I'm telling Ball hits you. you in the back of the helmet that you didn't well, see coming. No, and you're supposed to pick that one off? Not that one, but I, I thought uh, Kamara might have had a chance to come up and do it. Doss is going to take a shot, and he's able to sneak it in. A touchdown catch for Brandon Bell. Good throw right there between the safety and the corner, Richard. Got a little step on the, I don't know if that was Mike Hilton or, or King, but whoever was defending. We got 228s on defense, by the way. So, but a good job there. Well thrown ball from Kendrick Doss, and uh, probably will be red shirted come the fall, but he's had a good score. That was the Kedrick King in the coverage that time. Looks like we'll go back with the ones again, Richard. We haven't talked a lot about the ones offensive line, but let's let's talk about those guys for a minute. Uh, of course, Laramie Tunsil, number 78, he's the everybody's All-American at left tackle. And, uh, of course, Justin Bell playing the left guard position. If we get Aaron Morris back in the fall, which we will, that could maybe swap around. But uh, Ben Steele has taken over the center position. And Durante Bolton, a young man who was uh, red-shirted last fall, a freshman has had a fantastic uh, spring, and he's certainly in the mix to a starting position. And Golson, Austin Golson, slid out from his right guard position to right tackle, and uh, so this is not a, a, an offensive line that's had a lot of snouts, but a very, very athletic group, as you see right there, opening holes. And uh, Jordan, Jordan Wilkins, Wilkins blasts it through. that time to the outside. Ole Miss lost three offensive linemen from a year ago: Jared Duke, Evan Swindoll, and Pierce Burton. All starters. Three guys kind of competing. Emmanuel, for that. Emmanuel McCray also, who played a lot as a backup. Three guys really competing for that center position. You made reference to Ben Still just a second ago. Robert Conyers in the mix could play that. Justin Bell, who has been a guard primarily. Uh, they've, they've worked him some at, at that spot as well. 
So there's three options there to play the center position if uh, one of these two guys they don't like. But well, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier Fon Cooper, the JUCO transfer who's coming in. They're expecting big things from him, and then a couple of freshmen. And that's a tall ask to ask a, a, a freshman from high school to come in and contribute on your offensive line. We saw it a year ago with Laramie Tunzel and with Austin Golson, and two pretty good, pretty good ones in uh, in Rod Taylor out of the Jackson area and uh, Jordan Sims also uh, coming in as part of the recruiting class from this past year. Rod Taylor played at Callaway. He's six three three twenty, and if. You saw him in any of the All-Star games. You can see he's he's a man. He is a man, and they, they think he's good enough to, to probably not in a starting position, but certainly as a as an extra backup in that guard position. So they're counting on young man out of Jackson to really help. Uh, Jordan Sims, big kid, 6'4", 348. That was one of the hotly contested recruiting battles all the way down to the end. Yeah, the back door of Alabama and Auburn, so Rebels are certainly glad to get it. And Cade in there playing quarterback right now. And he's moved this uh, second group down inside the 15-yard uh, line, first and 10. And, uh, so I'm sure he would like to uh, be able to put, put this in. The, actually, it's the first-team offensive line and receivers, Richard. So can Cade in there with the first group. That's Evan Ingram in motion out to the far side, and then a flag comes in. You know, it's all it's all about a team, and you know, you work with the second team or the third team. But I wonder how different it feels for Devonte Kincaid when he steps in there and looks out, and he's got Laquan Treadwell and Evan Ingram and Quincy Adeboyjo. And what you've got, and here a first team offensive line in front of him. And they've done a little mixing here on this offensive line. They've moved Austin Golson over to left tackle and moved Robert Conyers out to right tackle. So right. just doing some, you know, experimenting with that offensive line, but. Uh, you know it feels good when you got some protection. Kincaid run out of bounds at the 15-yard line. If he wanted to go quickly out to the left side, it wasn't there. And down, decided to keep it himself. Well, he's a he's a, a, a quick young man, so he, he quickly made that decision. No one open. Let me just pick up some positive yards, and uh, he did. Five on first down. But after, excuse me, we gained a four on first down. So after the penalty, it's second and 11 coming up. Kincaid is complete. Collins Moore on the reception just outside the five yard line. He just short of a first down, be third and about a yard. And it's well covered. We were talking about Cliff Coleman earlier. He's playing that uh, DB position, that cornerback position on the near side. But uh, he threw it right where only Collins Moore could get it. He goes down on, on both knees and makes that grab and uh, gets it very, very close for a third and one. So here a third and one, Devontae Kincaid. will hand it off to Mark Dodson. Hesitates and he's driven back, loses a yard on the carry. We'll bring up on fourth and two. And Pretty good pursuit that time by the defensive line. It was, and, and, and that's the other thing. You're down inside the 10 yard line. You got third and one. You got to have something to get quick. And I think there was just too much ride there. Kincaid letting that ball uh, stay in the in the belly of the running back. And, and, and really, he doesn't clamp down on it until Kincaid pulls his hands off of it, if that makes sense to the average listener. But you got to have it quicker. you got to have something that hits quicker than that, Richard, because you lose about a half a step. You can't do that on third and one. Fourth and two. Passes incomplete. Kincaid that time was trying to hook up with Nicholas Parker out of the backfield. Was broken up on the play, and that's going to bring the Grove Bowls to an end. The offense gets the better of the defense by three, according to the scoring system we use today, 15 to 12. Bo Wallace had a pretty good day throwing the football. And he is our Geico go-to player of the game for the 2014 Grove Bowl. Bo Wallace was 10 of 19 passing, 152 yards. And a touchdown toss, no interceptions today. And we will visit with Hugh Freeze, head coach of the Rebels, coming up next. The Grove Bowl 
All done in Oxford at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium on CSS. Hugh Freeze joins us next. 2014 Grove Bowl has come to an end in Oxford on CSS. Next up for the Rebels, August 28th, a Thursday night in Atlanta, Georgia, where Ole Miss will beat Boise State in the Georgia Dome to start the 2014 season. 15 practices in the book for the spring. And now the countdown begins to the 2014 college season. For my partner, Harry Harrison, Hannah Chalker, and our entire CSI crew, I'm Richard Cross. Thanks for joining us in Oxford. Good night.